Hi guys, Freddy here. Welcome back to the desktop for this week's Retro RPG. And this week I would like to present this, Ars Magica. Now this is the 4th edition from Atlas Games, who also brought out the 5th edition. This came out in 1996, the 5th edition came out in 2004, and it's the most recent version. Um, however, Ars Magica has had a bit of a strange history jumping between companies. It was originally brought out by Lion Rampant Games, with the 1st edition in 1987, and then they brought out a 2nd edition in 1989. Now, Lion Rampant Games then combined with White Wolf Magazine to form White Wolf Publishing, which then released the third edition in 1992, which tied the game in uh, much more closely with the World of Darkness, which obviously White Wolf is more well-known for, especially as one of the authors of Ars Magica, uh, Mark Rainhagen, is the primary author of the World of Darkness games. Um. After that, when it came out from White Wolf, the license was actually sold to Wizards of the Coast, who brought out some source books for it. Um, this is the fourth edition, as I said, from Atlas Games, but it is still available free of charge through the um, Warehouse 23 website. I believe that's it. It's an offshoot of Steve Jackson Games. I'm sure if you Google for it, you'll find out but they offer it as a free download, the 4th edition rulebook. But let's start with the back cover, because I've already given you a bit of an info dump. Let's line it up. Learn magic, for it is the only truth of this reality. Become magic, and you will become the essence of the truth. Fear not what others call the twilight, for that realm of dim illumination is not dusk, but is in fact dawn. By Creamon the Founder. The Art of Magic, the award-winning first edition of Ars Magica, set a new standard for magic in fantasy role-playing. It pioneered storytelling st style of role-play that has become so popular today. Its setting, mythic Europe, sparked the imaginations of fantasy fans and history enthusiasts alike. Now, the fourth edition brings the game up to date, it introduces improved systems in key areas such as combat, character advancement, and covenant creation. It retains a powerful and flexible magical system. Ars Magica 4th Edition is fully compatible with the game's previously published supplements. Yeah, which is nice. It uses a kind of version of the same rule as, uh, rules as World of Darkness, Bold D10s, etc, etc. However, um, there's two major points. We'll start leafing through the book as I speak. Um, I haven't actually opened this cover before. This is not a game I had. This has again been provided by Deshar. Cheers, mate. He was clearing out his cupboards, wanted rid of stuff, and I, my home is definitely a home for old and lost role-playing supplements. Um, Mythic Europe, which is the setting for this, is 12th and 13th century Europe, but with a spin that... Oh, there's a lot of text here, not a lot of artwork. Um, as I was saying, it's Europe, but where all the myths are true. So, um, angels come and visit people and help them out. So, dragons live in the mountains. Vampires live in the castles. Fairies steal babies from cots. You know, every myth you've heard of European things... So, in Scotland, we've got the Kelpies, who are seahorses which grab people from um, lakes, or lochs, because they're Scottish, and drag them down under the water. Um, they're all real. They're all part of this. The other big thing about Ars Magica, we're actually at the section now, so we've got the Maguses who are the powerful characters who cast magic. But we also have grogs. And Ars Magica tends to set up... Well, the rulebook asks that you rotate two Games Masters for a start, so everybody gets to play. I'm not sure anybody in the world has ever done that with one campaign, because there'd be no way of keeping consistency and keeping any secrets from your players. But anyway... The way it's set up is the Maguses need to go away from time to time to do research. So, 
everybody basically has several characters. They're Magus and then several Grogs, who are ordinary people who don't have magical abilities at all. And you'll play this party of the powerful Magus and then several Grogs, but the Magus will have to change from session to session while he goes away to research new magic, whether he's studying in the library or whatever. So everybody gets a chance to play the most powerful character, who is far more powerful, while everybody else gets to play just a grunt, somebody who can be easily replaced. And it's an interesting setup. Um, as I said, the third edition tried to tie in the um, background to the world of darkness, saying that it was people's dreams coming form in the old days, and making out that the magic orders from Ars Magica were the mages from World of Darkness just in the past. In fact, I believe one of the things that Mark Rainhagen planned for Mage was to make Ars Magica, but in the modern day. Um, while I'm speaking, I'm kind of ignoring. We've got Virtues and Flaws here. Grog, Virtues and Flaws. Plus one, plus two. So we've got a lot of character creation stuff here. Abilities and using them. Can I flip to the back and see if there's a character sheet? So characteristics, intelligence, perception, strength, stamina, presence, communication, dexterity and quickness, virtues and flaws, abilities, personality traits. The name player, Covenant Saga, Magus, Companion, Grog. Body levels, it all looks fairly similar to World of Darkness, although not laid out quite as nicely. Anyway, we've got lots of skills here. We've got magical training. I'm not being very impressed with this for a 1996 book. The artwork is not of the greatest. Um, the World of Darkness stuff, which came out about three years before that, this had a lot more artwork in it. Was a much more attractive book to read. These don't stand out to me to being anything outstanding at all. Got the laboratories, obviously that's one of the things the Maguses have to go to do and train. So they've got potions, familiars. The familiar as a character. We've got spells. Lots and lots of spells. Level 40 spells. I'm skipping through bunches of pages here. We're still on spells. Obviously for a game about mages there is going to be a lot of spells. Okay, we seem to have come to the end of that. We've got the combat section. Storytelling. Obviously it's putting a lot more uh, emphasis on storytelling like the World of Darkness games became, um, Ars Magica was a similar style of game. Um, I'm afraid that much more modern games like Star Trek, uh, Conan and that put a lot more emphasis on storytelling now by getting players involved in creating the story through the use of their special abilities. So the storyteller system I don't actually feel promotes storytelling over rolling dice. In fact, quite the opposite. But maybe I'm just getting it wrong. Saga and play, covenant characteristics, and the world. Let's read about Scotland. King of Scots is Alexander II. No, there's nothing particularly interesting about Scotland there. Picks to Celts, Tarburnia, to do anything. It doesn't actually really mention the Scots there, which I find slightly odd. The Scots themselves being Irish immigrants. I'm afraid in the history of Scotland, the Picts 
and other groups were native to Scotland. The Scotti were an Irish tribe which came over and took over. So the people of Scotland aren't actually natives. I don't know, immigrants coming over and taking our countries. Um, cities, lots of background information here. Again, I'm not overly impressed with the amount of artwork in this. It's not really selling it. There's a lot of text here. We're on to the end. Okay, that's a first look, really, because I've never really looked at Ars Magica before. I've heard a lot about it. I, I believe I actually made a character for it back in the early 90s, so it would have been for an early edition than this. Uh, but that is Ars Magica. I really like the idea of one player playing the team leader and being very powerful. But that character having a mechanic built into the system so they need to take time off. So the leadership role gets swapped around the party. I'm really big on that because it is one of my complaints about games where there's an obvious leader. Star Trek's the one which comes to mind because that's a game I'm playing where one character will be the captain or the first officer or whatever and will be nominally in charge of the other players. Which doesn't really work for a gaming group, especially if the person who becomes first officer isn't one of the more pushy people. They will get tended to be sidelined. But anyway, thank you very much for listening to me ramble on and look through this book. I recommend it as a source of ideas, if nothing else. Go and get, download it from the Warehouse 23 website. Free! You can't get a better price than that. Enjoy it till your money back. I'm sure they can make that promise. Please like and subscribe if you like what I'm doing. But most of all, you look after yourselves. And I'll catch you later. Bye.